everyone it's me Nicole and I'm gonna try and do a bunch of videos today so if you see me having the hair, same hairdo with the same hair headband this is wardrobe from my daughter she's just awesome and the same background that's why I'm trying to get a bunch done while both of the girls are simultaneously taking a nap so <laughs> that's the explanation for that so um, my hospital and birth experience didn't go exactly like I had wanted it to most of you guys know if you've been following my journey I was really wishing and preparing and dreaming about having a VBAC um, but that didn't happen I ended up having a c-section but I'm at peace with that and I'm actually really happy with the way that the c-section went down and I'm really happy with the experience that I had except for one thing I was planning on having my placenta encapsulated and ingesting it. This is something that is getting more popular as more moms are finding out about it and it has a lot of benefits. So um, a couple of the benefits that I was looking forward to was help getting back to my pre-pregnancy weight and also assistance with my hormones regulating. You know, after you give birth, your hormones take a dive and sometimes people crash really, really hard off of that. and so. I wanted to I wanted a little bit of help in that in that department I didn't have any um, postpartum depression with Sadie but you know a lot of stuff has happened this year if you don't know um, just a lot of stuff has happened this this year with our family and you know I do have an older daughter and so I didn't know if my hormones would p play a bigger part and if I would be more susceptible to postpartum depression this time but the most important and the, the the number one reason that I wanted to have my placenta encapsulated was because I knew that it helps with breast milk production and that's something that with Sadie my breastfeeding experience didn't go as I would have liked it to and so this time I wanted to do everything that I could to make sure that I had a better breastfeeding experience and I thought for sure that um, the placenta encapsulation would help with that. So those are the reasons why I wanted my placenta to be encapsulated and why I wanted to ingest them. I had let my care provider know about that. My doctor and his midwives all knew that I was going to do placenta encapsulation and all signed off on it. They thought, no big deal, that's fine. They didn't tell me anything special about it. They didn't warn me about anything. So I just said, you know, I'm going to have my placenta encapsulated and they said, fine, no problem. Um, and that was part of my birth, birth plan whenever I had gone over my birth plan. So whenever I was in the hospital and I had told the nurses there about it, they brought in um, some forms for me to sign, like release forms saying that I was going to remove my placenta from the hospital, seeing as it can be a biohazard or whatever. Sign forms on that. Um, they had put a note on my patient board. They have whiteboards in the hospital, at this hospital, and basically they just write down things that are important to the patient, and that was one of the things that was important to me. Um, and so, yeah, everybody knew that it was super, super important to me that I had my placenta given back to me so that I could use it for placenta encapsulation. So let's fast forward a little bit. I had my c-section, I'm back in the recovery room, and as I'm kind of laying there in a daze, I look over and in one of the chairs is a red bucket which had a biohazard sticker on it, and I knew that that was my placenta. They had informed me late into my labor that they were probably going to want to take my placenta for testing. And I said, that's no problem, but if you're going to need to pour any kind of chemicals on it, please just have them take a section of my placenta, just like a little sample of it, and test the sample. There's no need to have my whole placenta and to test my whole placenta. And so they said, oh yeah, no problem, that's not a big deal, da 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 So I saw my placenta, I knew that my placenta was in this bucket that was sitting on the chair in the recovery room next to me and um, it was just kind of sitting there and I knew that time was going by, I was getting close to an hour and you are supposed to, at least from my um, doula that I was working with, from her directions, the placenta needed to be refrigerated within four hours. So I called the nurse over and I said, this placenta needs to go into the refrigerator within four hours. If if it doesn't get refrigerated, it's no good to me and it will die. And so I, I you know, let her know that. She reassured me that everything was going to be okay with the placenta. And so I, again, I was just in such a tired, exhausted, 
anesthesia days that I wasn't going to dig more into that. So I go back to my room, we go on enjoying our baby, and the next day I get a phone call from the pathology department letting me know that somehow um, somebody in the pathology department had poured formalin on my placenta before they saw the um, the paper that told them not to mess with it. So, and I knew, I knew, I had, I just felt like something, I was just like, you know what, this is not going to end up working out. That bucket was sitting right there, just casually right next to me, like it was no big deal. Nobody was rushing to put it in the refrigerator. I just know something was going to go wrong. And I received this phone call that, that, um, that confirmed that they, weren't taking care of it and they weren't paying attention to the directions that they were given and they effectively killed my placenta. Once formalin, which is a form of formaldehyde, is poured onto your placenta, it is poisoned and you may not um, ingest it any longer. And so I was, you know, I was in a happy state because I had my baby, um, but I was also just disappointed and upset so I am the type of person depending on the issue I may or may not complain this is something that I felt deserved to be complained about okay baby number two is no longer napping um, so I went ahead and called the head of the nursing department and let her know what had happened and so I don't know if it was later that day or if it was the next day but they sent the patient relations representative to my room and it was actually two people and they just wanted to know what they could do to help and I told them I said you know there's nothing that you can do you know it took me 10 months to make that placenta you know it's not something that I can just do without producing another baby I mean it's something that that cannot be given back to me and so um, they were really really sorry they, um, the woman actually, it was a man and a woman, the woman actually started getting emotional. I was, I was surprising, you guys know that I'm pretty emotional, um, but I wasn't, I was kind of, okay, that's it, you know, I, I, I'm sad about it, but at the same time, there's nothing that anybody can do to bring it back. But, um, but yeah, I, in telling them my story and what I hoped to do with the placenta and everything like that, the, um, the woman got a little emotional because I had used the words, you know, they killed my placenta. This is something that belonged to my baby. This was something that connected me to my baby. And it was something to help me in my future with, you know, this baby. And it, that opportunity got taken away from me. Sorry if I'm looking down. I'm watching my baby nurse. So, yeah, she, they, they definitely related to me in that aspect. And they said if there was anything that they could do to make it any better to let them know and at first there wasn't anything you know we I was just upset but um, and at the time Robert was not in the hospital room with me but when Robert got back to the room we got to talking and we decided that maybe maybe there was something that they could do to kind of maybe make up for a little bit of it what they came up with was that they were going to buy me a one-year membership to a gym of my choice and so that was pretty that was I mean like I said it's not going to replace the placenta but it, it can help with one of the areas that the placenta was supposed to assist me in so you know but I guess the reason that I am telling you guys about this is if you are interested in doing placenta encapsulation I would um, be very assertive in saying that you want to keep the placenta by your side with you um, at all times. Take a cooler with you and make sure that it stays at the right temperature. Have your doula come get it, your placenta encapsulator, you know, do whatever you have to do to make sure that your placenta does not leave your side or um, have the hospital walk you through what their policy is. 
So, some things that I found out after the fact in the recent weeks since her birth. Number one is that according to this hospital's particular policy, if the OB decides that your placenta needs to be sent for testing, you may not have it back. I don't know necessarily if they could have taken a section of it and just tested the section of it, but as far as um, I know, if your placenta is sent for any kind of pathology, um, it's most likely because they are sure that something is going on and you are not going to get it back. So that's not something that the nurses knew, it's not something that I was informed of, and so I had these expectations that I was going to get my placenta back. Um, but I was, you know, still upset about it because they should have told me, they should know their policy and they should tell me that so I'm not expecting something different. And then the second thing that I found out was my actual results from the testing. And I don't remember the word, I will in, um, insert it in an annotation so you guys can see what the condition was called. But basically the test results came back that I had a minor uterine infection. and. Um, and that it could have stemmed from having too many cervical checks. So I'm going to be doing a video about what I hope to do differently next time and that is definitely going to be on the list. I do not think I will be doing cervical checks every week leading up to the birth. Um, and there's reasons for that and I'll go into that in that video. But yeah, so that's my placenta. That's the story with my placenta encapsulation. I know that I had probably stated in a couple of my videos that I was planning on doing that. And I always want to know when, when moms say that they're planning on doing placenta encapsulation, I'm always interested to know how it worked out for them. But um, in my case, I didn't even get a chance to see if it worked for me because um, it was sent to pathology and I never got it back. So that's my story. Luckily the doula that I was working with, she was going to have me pay her when I got the pills. So um, I didn't lose any money on that, but, um, but I lost my placenta, unfortunately. So that is that. I hope you guys um, benefit from this video. Like I said, if you guys are planning a hospital birth and you guys are planning on um, doing placenta encapsulation, definitely make sure you know the ins and outs of your hospital's policy. And if you can, just keep your placenta in your own custody as much as possible. So those are my tips. I hope you guys have a great day and I will talk to you later. Bye.